streaming live around the world, this is Paper Cuts with Brad and Jay. We'll just get this out of the way here. Thanks for joining us on Brad's show. Yeah, thanks for coming to my show. You I did not say Shanae's. <laughs> okay. Are you, are you drinking already? No, I've just got water. Just got water. <laughs> Always looking smooth, aren't you? Yeah, I, I do. I try to clean it up for the show. Look, one of us has to. Come on. In this episode of Paper Cuts, we are joined by Katriana Ward. We are live. Oh, hello there, everyone. Welcome to a special Saturday edition of Paper Cuts. Now, normally, when we have a Saturday edition, that means we're going overseas, and we're joined by a friend that's normally overseas. But this time, our guest happens to be in the States. So how <laughs> confusing is that? What's up, everyone? That's Brad over there. My name is Jay. Before we introduce the guest, I just want to say, Brad has not slept for like a month because he's been so excited about this. I've been pumped the show so to change things up a little bit brad you do the honors of introducing our guest this time oh, I'm, you're not exci- I'm excited too but brad has not <laughs> left just for the records okay so, it's been been full of jitters the whole yeah. time a lot of coffee so, this, so, go so i'm gonna i'm gonna butcher your first name even though you told me how to say it so i'm gonna just say cat ward because <laughs> i've said it katrina and catriona and i don't think either one of those is right <laughs> It's actually, it, it's really difficult. It's Katriana with a sort of... Katriana. Katriana. Yeah, yeah there Katrina. you go. Perfect, you did it. There you go. Thanks. I can so, copy. So I messed up the intro, basically, is what you're telling me. <laughs> so, I said yeah. it the way that it sounded. <laughs> or the way that it looked like it was the right way, so... <laughs> so we have Katrina, Katrina. See, I'm already messing it up. <laughs> we have Katrina fine, Ward. Honestly. So I, pron- I mispronounce it all the time just so that people can know how to say it. You mispronounce your own name. <sighs> nice. All the time, yeah. So she's the author of uh, The Girl from Raw Blood, The Last House on Needless Street, which is just a mind-blowing book, Sundial, and the brand new Little Eve. I guess kind of brand new, but not brand new since it's a re-release, but brand new from mm-hmm. Tornight Fire in the States now. So welcome, yeah, Kat. Thanks for, thanks for joining oh. us. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it's very exciting about Little Eve because it's it's my it's sort of a second life for the book. You know? Yeah, it, it's um it came out in the, in the UK in 2018 and it did really really badly. I mean, like terribly. Like oh, I've no. never <laughs> seen a book do so badly. Like like it sold minus copies, and um and then <laughs> it had this <laughs> wonderful um second life where it got the Shirley Jackson Award and and then um you know Nightfire were had enough kindness to take to take it on as well after Needless Street and it's it's amazing it's like having a sort of it's like what it's like is like looking at a photograph of yourself as a child because you're a completely different person now you know, <laughs> as um than you were when you wrote it so, so how does that work you. has anything changed in the book or is it still the original from 2018 well they gave me the opportunity to change it and I thought no I don't think I will I corrected one error I um I think yeah. because um I got something wrong about Gaelic Scottish Gaelic which is bad because it's set in Scotland so I, I corrected <laughs> that but um I I decided not to change anything I put a new there's a new foreword mm-hmm. um which kind of contextualizes the book and talks about how things have changed for me since then and um and, and also talks a little bit about the journey of the book itself so that and that was fun to write it was like it's quite quite emotional actually you know revisiting those times and revisiting that 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 particular book but i i, I decided not to change the text now I, I thought it is what it is it's finished you know? right so let's see i was gonna say so it actually came out before needle street mm-hmm. but so do you think the the uh the success of needle street kind of made people realize hey little eve is here and now it's revamped and, and ready to go did that help any or in my way oh, off with definitely that? Oh, no, that's, I mean, that's the whole reason, you know, yeah. um, despite it being, you know, no matter how much people like it, and some people did like it, no one can, you know, re- reasonably organize a new publication, uh, a US publication for a book that's not really selling very well. So it was very, very, um, very, uh, very much need street that opened the door um, okay. to mm-hmm. leave coming in, which was great, which is really great. And so, and so nice, because it, so it's sort of, so it's my second book, but it's pretending to be my Oh, book. Yes, that's right. No, fifth book. Wait, how many books have I written? <laughs> <laughs> you tell us. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's my, it was my second book, and then Needle Street's my third, and then Sundial is my fourth. So it's my second book pretending to be my fifth book. Right. So with um, what, what do you think it was that was unpopular about it to begin with, like when it was released in the UK? Was it just bad timing or? 
I don't think it was I don't think it was unpopular with readers. I think mm-hmm. the publish the publisher didn't really connect with it. It just okay. it just happens sometimes, you know. Um I was also I was with a very, very um quite hardcore like literary publisher and I think that they were not entirely sure what to do with something that has you know I think most of my books have this middle of the Venn diagram between horror thriller mystery literary you know and and they don't and they don't necessarily easily sit on um one particular shelf and I think they were just a little puzzled as to what to do with me um so it didn't really get much exposure or marketing or anything like that um okay. but you know and these things do happen with books it's just it's, it's a business isn't it right mm-hmm. i mean and nowadays you have so many different uh publishers that are kind of blurring that line in between is this a mystery is this a thriller is this a fan- yeah. dark fantasy is this horror and they're going with everything so yeah i, I could definitely see a kick you know really getting big now because of all of the uh newer publishers we have from 2020 moving forward so definitely yeah, yeah. And you hardly see just like a straight up just horror or straight up sci-fi or fantasy. It's usually a mix of something nowadays. Everything's mixing together. Well, mate, hasn't it always been, you know, like yeah. in a way, hasn't horror, I mean, horror's always, it's, it's such a like an efficient parasite horror. It draws from <laughs> all of these different genres and absorbs them and sort of internalizes them and then spits them back out at you. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, I, I, for me, I think this, this, this feels like a natural progression it's just maybe publishers are less afraid of the word horror so yeah. they're they allow it into the mix a little bit more which is delightful for me because i think horror anyone who's ever heard me talk about anything knows that i find a way to bring into the conversation what an amazing passionate and, and compassionate genre horror is and what uh-huh. incredible storytelling power it has right um, despite the fact it's often dumped at the bottom of the sort of genre hierarchy it is which is horrible <laughs> Yeah, because we were talking, we were talking with uh, Keelan Patrick Burke a few weeks back, and he agreed. Yeah. We were talking just about that itself, how mm. uh, a lot of publishers were used to term like thriller, you know, or yeah, thriller, dark you, fantasy, and, be, yeah, like put everything in that. And, and some of the stuff you read <laughs> under that genre, you're like, this is not thriller, this is horror, but they're afraid yeah. to say horror to minimize the audience. So, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a strange thing because horror ha- is and always has been incredibly popular and incredibly, mm-hmm. um, as I was saying, like, an incredible g- expressive genre that talks about all these important things. You know, it, it talks about social social justice and gender and power mm-hmm. and and um, and and like landscape and all of these amazing things. And yet, for some reason, people you know yeah. slightly dunk on it. But anyway, not anymore. Maybe At least it's too true. Done. It could just be too true, too close to real real life, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> I think that's I think that's a really good point because it you know it asks you to be uncomfortable, and people yeah. don't necessarily want to be uncomfortable. But I think it's mm-hmm. important. Uh, you know, it's it's weird because it, it, in a way, horror is being is being has more integrity when it is genuinely making people uncomfortable and asking asking them to self reflect and examine themselves. Then it is you know the things that people are much more comfortable with say than like say um. You know, it's not getting beheaded on Game of Thrones. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so do you ever have the, the, you know, someone ask you what you do and you, oh, I'm an author. What do you write? Horror. And they go, oh, you're the horror writer. I feel like that's common a lot too. It's like, oh, you write horror. It's like, oh, that's not very good stuff. Or maybe even family members are like, you know, afraid to approach you about things <laughs> because of what you write, you know. <laughs> in case I'll put them in a book. Oh, yes. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, I, and I, do, I do. So they should be afraid. Yeah. That should be an honor. So it is for me. I, I'm in a couple of different books, and I'm I'm so ecstatic about it. So I would love to be in anybody's oh, book so you, and get killed what? off. So, <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Wait, well, yes. you're in, whose books are you in? That's amazing. Should I do some name drops? Yeah, yes. name drops. Ever, of course. <laughs> so there's a character in Laurel High Towers below. That's after oh, me. Um, oh. There's an, a different name I went by uh, in a Ross Jeffrey yet yet to be released book. Mm-hmm. Um. Was Rebecca it a, Roland has me in in a short story. So, what, well, Brad? What was that? What's a Ross's new book? The Devil's Pocketbook. Is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He just signed with somebody, and so now people could see that character die. Hopefully, a, gr- a gruesome <laughs> death. <great>. Yeah. <laughs> so, you do, do you die in every one of these books? That's that's the stipulation that you know. <laughs> oh, I gonna see. Use, oh, I see. I see. Any kind of connection with me, I have to die a horrible death. So. <laughs> I mean, that, yeah. That's an honor to be killed off in a book. Yeah, I, I, I'm in. Uh, uh, my buddy in in the UK, uh, L. Stevenson, his uh, 
the final uh, part in his trilogy, which I got a, a first look at. I'm in that one, and I die pretty gruesome. Oh, wow. death, so. <laughs> I can't, can't nice. wait for that one to come out. So. <laughs> <laughs> and Kat, you're, well, in, I, uh, you're in Stephen King's new book, aren't you? Is it that new one? I wasn't going to bring it up, but then okay. I thought, yeah. Totally. Oh, bring it up, of course. Will. Yeah. <laughs> because we got to talk about the whole, your connection with Stephen King and all this stuff. So yeah, go, come on. Talk about that. <laughs> well, I <laughs> didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know it was there. Someone tweeted it, a screenshot of the page at me and I just started the book. I hadn't got to that, to that part yet, but there's uh-huh. a cat called Katrina in, yeah. in fairy tale. <laughs> it's I'm a black cat too. Just like a, like in last house, like Olivia, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, it could, I suppose, just be that Katrina is a good name for a cat, but that's too much of a coincidence. That's no, totally because, because you have several blurbs by him now, so that's just too. I do, yeah. That's just too close to it. So, <laughs> and I think it was, it, it's a little, a little, as you say, a little needless street nod as well, a little black cat. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, you can imagine what a moment that was. I think I saw it. I was, I was in. I think I was in France and I saw it at about four in the morning. Just happened, you know, you wake up in the middle of the night and you glance at your phone just like uh-huh. ra- randomly. And I happened to see this. And God, I woke up quickly. I mean, I've never been so awake. So <laughs> Shut and you spent, awake. And, yeah. And then spent the rest of the night like pacing and waiting for my partner to wake up so I could, so I could shout at him. Like, I said, <laughs> um, That's awesome. and um, it was, I mean, it was a, it was a huge moment. I, I, um, you know, St- Stephen King along, along probably, you know, it's the Shirley Jackson Awards and then Stephen King probably, um, Stephen King did was, I think, the, probably the main um, turning point, but he changed my career, he changed my life. And, um, you know, he, he's, uh, he's wonderful at remaining engaged with the genre and he reads yeah. and reads and reads and reads. I, I don't know where that man finds the time. Um, but I'll, I'll, you know, there's, there's, there's no sense of him pulling the, the ladder up behind him at all. I, I'm, I'm sort of, I, I'll never, I'll never stop being grateful. That, that will always have been my, my start. And what uh, an honor, yeah. you know, to, as someone who's read, been, I've, I've been reading his books ever since, you know, yeah. in, in my, like in my teens. So, uh-huh. I remember an interview with him somewhere where he said he reads as much as he writes and in order to be yeah. successful yeah. writing, he has to read yeah. as much as he writes. So yeah, he finds time to do both somehow. Never I mean, you'll see him like, at a Red Sox game and he'll have the book like during the innings. Yeah. He'll wow. Really? Too. Yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. that I mean, that's, that's dedication incredible. right there. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he had that terrible accident, didn't he? Where he was, was walking along the side of a road reading. Yeah. He got hit um, by that van. Yeah. Yeah, awful, really bad. But uh, yeah, I mean, I've never. It's it's a strange thing because you know, I feel exactly about the the same way about Stephen King as I did when I was thirteen, mm-hmm. and it's still this is a, a massive um, cognitive disconnect for me that this this person who's writing I have inhaled and mm-hmm. who I think formed me as a writer and you know who, who I have a huge amount of admiration for is also the person who has not only apparently read my book. But been kind enough to blurb it. I, I I still haven't quite got my head around that. Yeah. So so you were you were a big King fan younger, growing up. Of course. Just absorbing I everything. Well, I yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know many horror writers who weren't. Right. Was, right. Still... <laughs> the last word. Yeah. Yeah. So how did that go about getting the blurb? Did that? Did you like have a list of people you'd like to have blurbs for? Did Tor Nightfire yeah. just send it out I mean, to whoever? Or? It wasn't even Nightfire. It was before I got the Nightfire publishing deal. So it was just a, okay. it was a, 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 an independent press in the, in the UK called Viper, who are part of um, Serpent's Tale, which is a w- wonderful publisher. One of the last few great kind of independents, not one of the big four. And um, yeah, it was coming out. It was coming out with um, with with them. And then and someone, a wonderful writer called Natasha Pulley, tweeted about it, saying, "This is the best horror novel I've ever read." And Stephen mm-hmm. King just replied to the tweet, at which everybody went absolutely bonkers. <laughs> um, and, and then because you think, I assumed that there's some kind of like Harry Potter style flu network for authors communi- and publishers communicating with each other. But my, my editor rang me and she was like, how do we get a book to Stephen King? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> um, but but we think, need to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we, I mean, we, because I think his tweet said, I need it. Which is obviously uh-huh. a very funny play on words for Needless Street as well, but yeah, yeah, and nobody nobody knew how to do it, and it took a little it took a little kind of like ringing around and sort of like 
putting our thinking caps on to do it, but but we did. And then of course, but of course, just because he sends, sends a tweet, he's not going to read it necessarily. Right. He's, like he's like he doesn't get a, got a lot. Like he doesn't get a thousand books each month. You know. <laughs> exactly. So. <laughs> yeah. So there was no guarantee at all that he, that he was. Um, it, it, it was. It is a bit like being sort of visited by some kind of fate or or kind of god because you're just like you don't know when you don't you can't control it. You don't know when it's coming, and um and it's very much outside your control. Um. Uh -huh. It, it um it was it was a very it was a very very wonderful and unusual experience, um and then it happened again with Sundar. Oh, but that was over. Right? <laughs> and now it's like, oh, it's two. You're good. <laughs> like, oh, uh, okay, yeah, that's yesterday's news. Let's Obviously get somebody new sure. now. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. don't know if there's anyone bigger. Yeah, I mean, I, I know. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah. yeah, I mean, really, for the horror, there's there's no one, and really, just yeah. books in general. I feel like if you just ask the average Joe who doesn't really read, name an author. Probably five times, nine times out of ten, they're gonna say Stephen King. Just yeah, I mean, he's so that, popular. Yeah. who would so want to be the, the, yeah. the blurber after King? It's like yeah. you ask somebody to blurb, like, but you have Stephen King. You're like, I'm down here. Are you, why would you want, you know? <laughs> well, maybe that's why I didn't get any other ones. No, I know it's, it's like I'm, I'm just, I'm just Dean Koontz. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm just. <laughs> Hamlin Bird has a question. Have you ever gotten to spoken with King, like personally in a message or anything? Or? Never, no, never, no, never. He's, um, I, 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 and and it, there's a part of me that's so frightened. Like, in case I ever accidentally do meet him, I'm like, what the hell do I say to him? <laughs> thanks um, for having my book. <laughs> yeah, well, thanks, we, thanks for my book. Yeah. We, we were hoping you'd say that because. Uh, Backstage no. <laughs> right now. No, I'm, I'm joking. Oh that, that, if he was, was backstage, just... I would just have a heart attack. <laughs> yeah, you guys. I, I feel like you wouldn't. You wouldn't have led with like anything else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. You made would, You would have hung here. up on us by now. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, here's my next oh, book God. and my next book. Take them all. Take them all. Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. Like, no, I wrote. I wrote him a letter, obviously, to thank him for, um, and I sent it to. I, I, it went wherever the things that get sent to Stephen King go, you know, and, and you may, may not have read it, but um, I, I thought it was I, I was very sort of dorky, heartfelt letter saying, you know, all the things that you would imagine. It is cool for as, as famous as he is. He does seem very down to earth and very supportive of other authors. Yeah. Oh, I think so. Yeah. No, he's not. He's not the problem. I'm the big geek, like who would, who would, make, who would make it awkward. And those blurbs will last you a lifetime. Like even if he doesn't read your next ten books, you can still put it on yeah. there, you know, and sell an yeah. extra five thousand copies or whatever, whatever they do for you. So, yeah, and it's it's something that I will always have. Just personally, I'll it's mm -hmm. always take it with you, which is lovely. And I, I don't want to give Stephen King all the credit, but what do you think no. it was? Because <laughs> before um before Last House came out, I was unfamiliar with your work. I hadn't heard of you as an author before. And then that came out. I you like... and everyone else in the world, yeah. <laughs> but I feel like everyone was talking about you and that book in particular just is like exploded. What do you think it was, I mean, besides the Stephen King blur, but you know, I don't want to give you your credit because you wrote the book. It's your story. Right. <laughs> what do you think it was about no. that book that just exploded and just kind of went viral almost in a way? I think, well, it, it did. And I think... I think there was something at work in me when I wrote it in that I'm um, because I spoke a little bit about the uh, hitherto unpopularity of Little Eve. And mm -hmm. um, I, I just remember thinking for my, for my next book, I, I may not, you know, it may not sell because I've done really badly. And you go to so you sort of go to book jail after that, you know, um, and you have like a bad credit rating. No, no one, no one will give you, no one will give you a publishing deal. <laughs> no one's it's giving true. you a loan. <laughs> no one's giving me a loan. Exactly. So, which is kind of get what an advance is really. Um, mm -hmm. So, I, I remember thinking, I may not get to do this again. If I never get to do this again, this is my favorite thing and the thing I've dreamed of doing for so long. I'm going to just write my big new book. You know, I'm going to write the book that um, no, but the, the, the book that doesn't conform to rules. The big, ambitious, insane book. And I mm -hmm. think that I think it helps not to have anything to lose. Um, and it's something I've tried to take into my writing. Uh, subsequently, is write like you've got nothing to lose, mm -hmm. um, because um, it it so it's neither need, need street quickly for those who don't know is about um, Ted, Lauren, and Olivia who live in um, a, a boarded up house at the end of Needless Street, which is uh, ends in this great wild Pacific Northwest forest in Washington State, and children have been going missing in that area for some years, and this woman D comes to believe that Ted is responsible for those disappearances, so she starts surveillance on him, and mm -hmm. she she come to think that something maybe his daughter might not actually be his daughter perhaps it's um it might be that he's kidnapped her sister right. um but part of it is narrated by a, a little uh black 
talking cat. Yeah. Um, and this is always the litmus test for this book. Is if you can get past the talking cat in chapter two, <laughs> this might be the book for you. It's um, yeah. it it is an incredibly complicated, ambitious book. Like, and mm -hmm. I I felt because everything is very much not as it seems. I'm not a big fan of the word twist because I think twist implies something you're some some kind of trick you're playing on the reader, and I don't I, yeah. I don't like to do that. I'm, I like I prefer reveal. Because what I wanted to do was build a world, construct a world so carefully, and then with just the pull of one, you know, what, like the tug of tug of a string or a thread, it would all rearrange itself and become a completely different world. And you'll, but you'll see, it should make sense. This, uh -huh. this revelation. So um, it was the hardest thing I've ever done. I think I remember getting up in the morning and thinking, I don't know if I can write this today. Like it's too hard. Um, but again surely that must be a sign you're doing it right um it was very ambitious and i don't think there was anything quite like it on i don't i don't think there's anything quite like it so i think that helped um and mm -hmm. and maybe and also this the um, a lot of we used to have <laughs> we used to have rejection mondays so when we were trying to sell it it did not fly it did not fly out of my agent's hands believe me it, it oh, yeah. um you know it no not at all it took a long time to get and and also almost everybody in publishing rejected it um, and um, it, that, but the reassuring thing was everybody hated something different about it. So, okay. which is great. <laughs> we just hate all of it. Everybody's yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. You're everything. just offending a lot of people all at once with different things. <laughs> great. Well, no, no, but that's much better because if, if yeah. everyone hates the same thing or it's all the premise, then maybe it's not just, maybe it's just not right. But if everyone's uh -huh. picking up on something different, it means it's making them uneasy. You're kind of doing your job, but, um, but, uh, there's no oh, there's no like one consistent flaw so that was uh -huh. almost reassuring actually um and then we had and then we had a few publishers uh, who were really bold and 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 uh, were interested and, we, and uh, i finally ended up with lucky viper in the uk so uh, and then subsequently with tour um and i think that they deserve a lot of credit for being like <laughs> Okay, okay. So there's a talking cat, yeah, <laughs> um, and going ahead and, and seeing what what it could do because they you know they bought it both both publishers both, both publishers bought it before Stephen King loved it so it, you know they mm -hmm. really were um I think and they're both brand new imprints as well yeah. which is what yeah. kind of wonderful really like you everyone's head is on the block together. So I was so going to ask, but since you don't like the word twist, let me re rephrase this. With so many reveals in this book, did you ever confuse yourself or get confused when writing it where you were at the time? All the time, yeah. <laughs> and and also, and also, I had I, there was it's that the structure is um so complicated that you uh, anything you change automatically means the whole almost the whole structure shivers, yeah. and you have to change mm -hmm. other things as well. So keeping track of all the interconnecting sort of gossamer threads which bind it together was really difficult, and I. I, I tried to do that thing, you know, that you see writers do in movies where they like make a diagram. I was going to say, I could see you with it. all the connected dots and postcards and stuff. It did not work. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why, but the moment I did that, it all just died for me. I couldn't see it anymore. The only uh -huh. way that I could write it was to hold it all in my head, um, which oh is a terrible, gosh. terribly labor intensive way to do it. But it was the only thing that worked. So I would just quite often just sit there frightened in front of it, just staring at it going, um, did you not like extreme... take notes that you could reference back to like I did this in chapter two now I'm in chapter 11 or, or was it just literally all in your head the thing is if you do that the, the note taking becomes almost as laborious as writing an entire other book because you're yeah. I mean, you know yeah. you you start yeah it's um it, it, was, it was it was really complicated and it, it tested me more emotion emotionally as well technically but also emotionally like it's it's a it's a rough book it's it goes to some quite dark places I think mm -hmm. I can imagine if you, if you were to use like the diagram, like you see in movies, people, writers. If I could imagine that would that could handcuff you too and paint yourself into a corner. Like, well, now I got to change the whole thing, you know, and fix yeah. chapter one to equal chapter eleven. And so, so, yeah. I mean, yeah, it just it for some reason my it wouldn't square with my right with my like imaginative landscape. It just wouldn't do it. It's sort of I see these days I try and see it sort of a bit more like a map. So I'm in, so mm -hmm. I'm in the map and I know where I'm going. I don't know how I'm going to get there. And you yeah. sort of, you see the book visually in, in your mind, but for some reason, ex making that exterior and drawing it or rendering it physically outside doesn't, it doesn't work for me. I, I, I don't know why everyone's different, aren't they? 
that just gives me so much more appreciation. Like I already loved that book, but now I'm so much more appreciative of it that you just had it all in your head and didn't have like notes and the board and everything behind you. Cause I remember reading it and there was one scene it was like, in one scene, like the carpet was red or the carpet was blue yeah, yeah, yeah. And later on. It was orange. Just like, she messed up. Did I catch a mistake? And then later on, it's like, <laughs> oh, it's, it makes so much sense now. I know it looks, it just looked, I think it looks initially like it's just been really badly written or edited. Because I, I went but, back um, and was like, hey, hold on. Before this carpet was blue, now it's orange. Something's, something's not right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Is it just, slop? am I just sloppy? Um, mm-hmm. But um, it's, oh God, it's making, so th- that level of complexity, this, this is very much in my brain right now because I'm just finishing up um, my next book, Looking Glass Sound, which is, um, it's it's a bit it's a big one. It's like Needle Street. It's got okay, a, cool. It's got it's got a lot. It's I think it might even be more ambitious if possible. I don't even I don't even know how that's possible. But it um and it's I want it's very very different from the others. Um, it's actually well I think they're all different. I think so. Like so, I went from Needle Street to Sundial, which is like set in the Mojave Desert, and it's all about like mothers and sisters. And there we go. Oh, isn't she beautiful? <laughs> I love this. Um, just, I love the pink and the purples, and stuff. Uh, it looks so good. It's an artist called Corey Brickley, who's just amazing. Um, That's great. He's, he's so good. They're so good. Um, and um, yeah, I, I, uh, I, I always try and because I think there's a problem with writing sometimes, whereby when you, when when I start to write the next book. I just end up writing more of the last one, but with different mm. character names, because uh-huh. it's difficult to make that transition, isn't it? Doesn't it? Isn't it? So I always try and do something really de- definitively different each time. So it, where Need the Street was all about isolation and being boarded up, and about um, you know a little found little found family. Um, mm-hmm. Sundial is about mothers and daughters and sisters, and 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 the complexity of those relationships because. I think it's easy to sentimentalize sentimentalize well women's relationships in, in on, on on the page and um, and on screen. I think in fiction it's, it's easy to make them cute or pretty, and they're, they're very they're very powerful and very feral. Right. Um, so Callie and Rob, who are the two main characters, and the mother and daughter, thirteen year old girl and her mother, go to this um, sort of um, facility, I guess it is, in in the Mojave Desert, and they mm-hmm. face off about the past and the present, and uh, at most of the most of the book each thinks independently that the other one wants to kill her and okay. i i just find this so relatable for fans <laughs> <laughs> you have some dark I secrets mean, to, to talk say, about <laughs> secrets will come out now this is, we're gonna find this is like autobiography later on in life <laughs> oh goodness no i have to i'm constantly having to reassure my family that they are not in the books um <laughs> but, but i just yeah you know uh, horror is just all it is is um what you love turning to fear isn't it so yeah, i yeah. rely on my family so heavily emotionally and i love them so much so the 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 flip side of that emotion is being afraid that that's something which nourishes you so deeply could turn to to um uh t- to danger um i I, it's also, but but I, but I also think that's a testament to the power and love that exists because it wouldn't be so frightening if there wasn't so much love, you know. Yeah, you wouldn't care um, as much. Yeah, you wouldn't care. Why would you care? You'd just be like, oh, it's just, it would just be sort of scattergun um, aggression. <laughs> so I haven't read, um, I have not read Sundial yet, but I've had friends tell me it is also not twisty, but uh, mind bendery or you know has the reveal, yeah. and Little Eve has yeah. that as well. You know the reveals and stuff. So I feel like that's sort of. Yeah. kind of your style now with last house is uh the girl from my is that like that as well or is that different that that actually does have a reveal as well yeah i mean i okay. think i think it's sort of the the reveal kind of for me feels very like life because mm-hmm. there is no omniscient narrator you know whispering in our ear telling us what's important or what you know what's going to happen or or and you know that that feeling that being, being completely blindsided and yet in retrospect looking back and seeing how all the signs were there I yes. find that incredibly realistic. Um, and I think it, it, it reproduces, in a way, it sort of dismantles what we go to books for, because we go to books to be for them to be better than life, don't we? We, we want them to be more organised, have character consistency and arcs and beginnings and endings and, 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 and villains and victims and heroes. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, I don't you really use any of that stuff. I, <laughs> I, I, make, I make it much more walking into the darkness um, as, as, as I feel... We, we do day to day, you know, it's, it's walking, feeling your way blind and hoping there's light at the end. 
Um, God, I'm making these sound fun, aren't I? Um, but... <laughs> well, the horror readers are like, yes, that sounds awesome. Yeah, I mean, that, that's what we're looking for. Yeah. yeah. So like when you when you start a new book, do you go into it saying, well, what kind of reveal can I do? Or is it just something that naturally progresses as you're going along with the rest of the story anyway? Well, I always, I always, I always have the beginning and the end. Often they change, but I start mm -hmm. with the beginning and the end. And, and I always want to know, like, what's the point? What's the point of this book? Because each, you know, each reveal should tell you something not just about the book, but about like you, about your life, about life, about about some 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 truth, you know, that you can that perhaps you can come away with and ponder. Mm -hmm. So I think that's sort of the starting point: is what 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 dreadful surprise, shock, or or revelation can make would make you see the world differently, you know, mm. that's, and, and then you try and, and then you try and uh, render it in book form. So that's, that's kind of what, what my starting point. And I, I often, as I said, in the map, I don't know how I'm going to get from beginning to end, but I, I do uh -huh. know those two fixed points. You've got sort of ten pole moments that you know you have to reach. And yeah. I mean, plot is your best friend in that, in that respect, because it's just with so much unknown and with, quite often keeping so much from the reader you, you got it, it can feel like you're inside a mad person's brain which actually technically i suppose i am inside this <laughs> brain which is pretty mad but um it's so it, it you know plot plot and sticking to your sticking to structure are really become really really important um i yeah uh, i love I, I think each book should be more challenging than the last if possible and hopefully the last thing you've done is your best thing that's the that's the hope so I uh -huh. always try and yeah, you know, I always try and push the, push the envelope further and further each time. Do you ever take so, a break in between books? Because you had mentioned that sometimes you start at the next one and, and you're it's like a continuation of the last one. Any kind of break in between so you don't make it exactly like it, or do you go straight for it? <laughs> I mean, I'm lucky enough to be doing one a year at the moment, so no, um, there is no break, and no break. I, you know, that no, no break, and I've I, that's been an adjustment as well because I used to have a little bit of time to decompress and stuff, and now I'm because but it's a privilege to be to, to be allowed to do one a year. Right. It's a privilege to be asked. So mm -hmm. I um I've had to learn how to you know shed my skin a bit quicker. Um, every, it's it's all you know it's all, it's all a learning process. And that's the thing is you never stop learning. Like, you know when I finished my first novel, I was like brilliant. I know how to write now. It's great. <laughs> I can do it. I'm a superstar. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. I, or just I know how to do it because I learned how to do it and then I did it. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. 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 Each book is a different world, and you and you fail and and learn an equal amount. I would say on each one, you just learn to do it quicker. Mm -hmm. James I, has a question, real quick. Um, if you could sort of recommend a book of yours to start, where would you say? I'd recommend Last House on Needle Street personally. Yeah, I think Last House is a good place to start. I think it's my um, it's my it's my um. It's my breakthrough book, and it's yeah. it's um it's certainly I think my most my most popular to date, and mm -hmm. it is the it's it's um it, it put it put put it this way if you can go that far into the crazy then you'll be able to handle whatever else is in the other whatever one. else is there yeah and yeah. I like I don't know if it was you that said it or if it was the tour Twitter account but mind benders I like that description for your books yeah. instead of twisty and stuff mind benders <laughs> yeah <laughs> mind benders yeah exactly um I think. Yeah, I suppose, it, again, it just reflects that sort of constant hypervigilant surprise I feel at being alive every day. You know, it's, it, being alive is kind of a mind bending exercise in itself, isn't it? Mm -hmm. what, what has changed over the, over the the years, the the books? Because you, I, you said most all of your books have these a lot of these reveals in it and, and take yeah. you on these journeys and all. Anything like particularly it's changed your style of writing, uh, your your process of doing so. I think my first my first two books were much more traditional gothic so they were they were historical they were set in the UK they right. were um, you know distressed girls wandering about on moors which is a genre I have a huge amount of time for I love but um you know I, do, I did it twice with uh, the girl from Royal Blood and then Little Eve and although I'm very proud of those books I just thought you know it was, it was part of that sort of sea change moment where I thought I'd like to do something really different and mm -hmm. as I we were discussing before we came on despite talking like masterpiece theater i am actually american i grew <laughs> up here i grew up i grew up here and um um and i thought i'd really like to use that part of myself as a writer um mm -hmm. i'd like to use the landscape i'd like to use you know the things i remember and the smells and the sights and the sounds of like these neighborhoods i grew up in and 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 the, and you know these, these amazing canvases like the mojave desert i, I really wanted to, to pivot to that so I thought what would be great 
was to to bring all of those wonderful gothic um preoccupations um, that that genre has like right. you know um it's like all of the all of that structural stuff it contains and and transpose it into these sort of slightly suburban um or you know very quintessentially american landscapes and uh -huh. also you know and to write to write them in, in idiomatically in um in this very very close first person my aim is always that that you're you're wearing the characters like a skin you know uh -huh. right proper ho proper horror image so you're not really it, it should be an uncomfortable level of proximity it should be an uncomfortable intimacy you're looking through their eyes and it's not always a comfortable experience so those are the, probably the two things which i made a big shift um in for needless street and have continued to use um but then it, it still has this like because the it still has it's this continuity with my past work but, you know uh, gothic is in it by its nature deeply fragmented it's it's a series of testimonies and accounts which are put uh -huh. together to make the story like Jack Dracula, Jonathan Harker's journal. And I feel like these, you know, the, the way that the narratives, when they puzzle piece together, tell the story is inherently very Gothic as well. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I feel, I feel like I'm sort of, I'm still in the process of becoming, I suppose, as we all are, but mm -hmm. I just, it's so, I, I got, I was so excited when I suddenly just threw off the more traditional trappings of that um, Northern historical Gothic. You right. Know? Do you, so you feel it's more freeing to do it sort of the way you're doing it as opposed to sort of sticking to this sort of structure and fitting your your style and more well, in storytelling me, yeah. into a hot? Yeah, for me, for me, yeah. But, but, but then I've done it twice. Uh -huh. So that would make sense. So maybe I couldn't have done it if I hadn't practiced and got really embedded myself in those in those more traditional, you know, gothic settings in a more traditional um, time period. I don't know. Um, and I also love, I, 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 I don't, you know, I will never stop reading um, all forms of gothic novels um you know contemporary or otherwise so it's not a I'm, i just want to be clear <laughs> i'm not like <laughs> dissing gothic novels because i love them right maybe it's time to accept the fact that your style is not to have a certain style to be the <laughs> un to do the un untraditional way of things that's just your style so Maybe well, I can accept that. that. <laughs> there you go. I, I mean, that sounds great. That sounds yeah. what what a wonderful kind of uh, amazing creative place to be. I guess. You yeah. know? And I might this I might be wrong, and this might be awkward if the answer is no. But don't you teach like a gothic kind of uh, class or something every every so often? I did. I did. I okay. I used to teach. Um. Um. I haven't done it this year. I just I need to write books. But um. <laughs> I'm, 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 hopefully, hopefully in the future, I can I can go back. I can go back to it. I'm also working on some. I'm also working on, on bringing both Neither Street and Sundial to film, which oh, we can't sure. really talk about. But yeah, I mean, you can never. <laughs> how does one I don't, do that with Neither Street? Just thinking about Needle Street, Street, like how to adapt that to film where it doesn't give everything away. Because it's different when it's on page, because you can't, you can only see what the characters are seeing. So that'd be really interesting to well, see it on film. <laughs> who, who's going to play the cat? Yeah. You got to get the oh, cat from oh, Sabrina no. the Teenage Witch. Oh. Just bring it back. <laughs> bring it back. There we go. Yeah. I feel like Meryl Streep would make an amazing cat. She would. Um, that should anyway, be a good Olivia. She'd be incredible. Yeah, she'd be incredible. But um, yeah, so I, I, the time has been a little bit more limited um, mm -hmm. this year. So I haven't done it this year, but I really hope to go back to it in the future. Um, it's the Arvon course, which okay. is in the UK. Um, it, uh, I teach it with Natasha Pulley. And um, it's a week-long residential course. And you go, everybody goes and stays in these amazing, beautiful old um sort of how they've got three sites around the country everyone goes mm -hmm. and stays together for the week and you workshop you read and workshop stuff and you know we'd give seminars in the morning it's, it's really fun and i learn a lot too you know i i learn a lot from from doing it and from and from the people who who, who take part it sounds immersive getting to go to those different locations and sort of be immersed in that setting and stuff too i feel like that would oh. help out your your imagination and your writing and stuff being in those settings Oh, it's great. It's it's really great. And also, like there was, uh, we, I did what we almost always do it over Hall over the Halloween um, week, which was oh, so that's even now. better. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm and and that. one one year, someone someone like people got lost, a mist descended, <laughs> phones cut out. There, someone threw a skinned sheep over the wall. We found it in, in, like in the early morning mist. I mean, it was a it was it was as if someone was writing us. Oh, say it sounds like a someone's writing the book for you right there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we want at points we wondered whether we were, we were in a book, you know. I mean, did so, people uh, think there were props that you were doing on purpose, or <laughs> just taking it in, you know? Yeah, I wish, I wish I'd, I wish I'd been the mastermind behind it, but no, it yeah. was just, it's just a really freaky weekend. 
a skinless a skin sheep they threw it over the wall so it's... yes it was a skinned it was it was it was yeah it was flayed so uh oh yeah. did y'all call like the cops or something or <laughs> yeah we did yeah we did yeah, and and you know it's a it was really amazing I, and like someone had been some some horror writer it's really amazing (laughs) yeah yeah exactly loved it great (laughs) um (laughs) but someone had been in the pub the night before the local pub which is two miles walk along a misty country lane Uh and you know that someone said something menacing to them about oh you see what you find in the morning my lover and um (laughs) and i mean it it was it was it was definitely a harbinger moment like an an opening (laughs) Um, the, anyway, uh, the horse uh, head uh, of the bed. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean that. I mean, even that's much more rational, isn't it? It's yeah, kind of <laughs> more of a, a mob style. So, <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> uh, Hamlin Bird has a question. Um, how long do you typically spend writing a new project? Uh, I used to spend uh, so ah uh, so I my first novel took me seven years, or mm. maybe closer to eight actually, and uh, my second novel took me two years. And then Needless Street took me one. And ever since then, it's been a sort of eight month cycle. Um, that's the first, that's for like first, first, like readable first draft, you know. Um, mm-hmm. I'm getting, I think, I do think that, you know, that there will probably be ones that take longer in the future because books are also different. They all have their own right. natures and characteristics. And it, it's always very difficult to predict what they're going to need. Um, but because I'm now, um, my resolution was as long as I can bear it, I'll do one a year because it's, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's, as I said, it's an honor to be asked. So I, I will, I will try and continue to do that. And that, so in eight, eight months from start to read, to readable manuscript, I think is there. And then you have editing and stuff. Do you but, just work um, on yeah. one at a time or? Oh God. Yeah. Well, I mean, it depends <laughs> what you mean. <laughs> it depends what you mean by working on. So, you know, I do like I'm, I'm right this morning. I was up at five writing looking glass sound and now I'm on here talking about little Eve, you know, it's, it's, it, you know, if you, you're always, you've always got a bit of, a bit of cross pollination in right. terms of um, uh, et, like, and also you, you'll be editing one while trying to start the next. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. But I think in terms of getting that first draft out, I don't think I, some people do. I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't work on two at once. And with uh, your first book, The Girl from Rubblehead, were you did you have a full time job while you were writing that? Yes, so that's which right. may have been why it took so long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um I yes, I worked for a human rights foundation in London. And uh I mean I, I, it did take a long time because of that, but I think it also took a long time because I was teaching myself how to write. Yeah. You know, it's it's um Tra- it, trial it's, and error and so much error. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So is no. there anything like in the in your past like may, you may have written when you were younger that we might see in the future that you might just unravel and just un- blow off the dust and release? No, I mean I don't the thing is that there's only one thing that I started writing a couple of years ago and then I st- decided to write Sundial instead. But um which I'm trying to get I'm trying to get my publishers to bite on it's quite <laughs> <laughs> Once again, it's complete departure. It's completely different from anything I've ever done. It's vam- it's vampires. Like I just I just don't oh, know if um just give it to me. No, vampires. Yeah. I'm I'm a sucker for vampires. <laughs> I think I think. And then if you write idea. vampires, I'm like for real a sucker for it. <laughs> oh, I'll find a way to make them depressing. Don't worry. Um, no, it's but okay. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's um it's uh it, yeah it's really exciting. I I won't talk too much about it because I don't know if they're going to go for it. And I'd be sad. that, but that's the only thing that in my sort of bottom drawer project because i only i'm not very i'm not very prolific i only have about four ideas you know mm-hmm. in my, i've only had about four ideas in my life and i wrote them all and so um it's it they tend to arrive good ideas tend to arrive very very slowly um i did have oh i did have an idea that i did that i chucked actually which was about um a group of psychics who went around recreating murders like like staging murders um and uh, as performances in the in the in the um the, at the murder scenes in order to to summon the ghosts of the murdered, it was just I just even for me it was just too weird. I, I couldn't get on <laughs> oh, with I, it. That caught my I attention would, um, just a little bit just now. <laughs> well, I mean, I may I may revisit it. I may re- revisit it, but but I mean, I may have to because as, as I said, I don't have many ideas. I tend to just write the ones. Well, and I one have, of the characters so. could be me, and and you, you, you kill <laughs> that you character. Go. Perfect. And... <laughs> 
we can go to we can go to, to yeah to your um to, to, to the scene of your death and uh, yeah. and summon you. <laughs> and then Stephen King will read it and blurb it, and then that's my connect it. six oh, degrees of I separation. Don't... See, you, you have it all set up now. Oh, oh yeah, oh my God. I mean, I don't I don't know if I can ever expect that that magic to happen to me again. But um, you know, I, I, I've I've had you know I've had a good run, isn't it? I can I just, just die. <laughs> I can be really. and I'm done. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Paul Shepard has a question. Mm -hmm. Sort of going along with you don't have very many ideas. Would you ever think about revisiting one of your books for a sequel or prequel? If that would even be possible, depending on how they how they end. Well, um, yeah, most most uh, many of my many of my characters start the book dead. So yes, it's very <laughs> difficult. But um, I did I did have a uh, I did have a strange experience for with with Sundial the other day when I had to mm -hmm. for various reasons imagine what a sequel would be like. Um, not in book form but in, in another medium and um uh, i found it very exciting actually i i really enjoyed it and i thought god i really might, i'd like to i might like to get dive into this um i think i don't think there's a follow-up to neva street i think neva street is, is is complete world into itself um yeah but i could um, i wouldn't rule it out you know it'd be really fun to um uh yeah it'd be really fun to 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 to, to see where those characters go with you know as i said because you know every, every book you're a different person you know on a molecular level almost um so i'd um i'd be really interested to, to, to try it as, as as an experiment but i think i think i want to do the new ideas first right uh -huh. see if if I get my publishers to bite on the vampires. <laughs> well, every, everyone's yeah loving the vampire idea. So yeah, if, if Tor Nightfire or whoever else is listening, which probably not, yeah. but if they are, give her give her the contract. I mean, the we, we can send this video to whoever you want. Yeah. To <laughs> Just that one little snippet. Right, give her the vampire yeah. novel. <laughs> And as far as Meryl Street being the cat in the Needless uh, Street movie, just, we'll just get on Twitter and just start, you know, yeah, just, oh God, just yes, and everything. Start starting that, starting that for, process. Go, for that immediately go to her home, just you know, <laughs> just pick don't, pick it outside her fence. Her <laughs> yeah, don't don't do that, everyone. You know. Not that I have that kind of power, but just in case it wasn't clear. So with uh, I just I really want to say something about Last House, and then we'll move on to Little Eve since that's your new one. But uh, I've read some reviews where, and I don't know if you pay attention to reviews, if you read them, don't care about them, if they bother you at all. But some of them were, and I, I want to try not to spoil the book, but mm, there's, yeah, a, I know. There's, there's, a, there's a certain condition in the book. And some of the reviews were saying that you were sort of uh, villainizing the condition or sort of taking advantage of it, which was very obvious that they didn't finish the book because that's not right, what you were yeah. doing at all. So do, yeah. did you see reviews like that? If so, do they do they bother you? Do you just try to ignore them or? Well, I have I I obviously want to be you know I, my my intention is is uh, you know to 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 do a sensitive examination of something which is very an extraordinary um, condition and uh, an extraordinary thing that the mind is capable of to you know a self protection mechanism. Um, mm -hmm. I will, will always listen if people say that I've got something wrong. I, I, that's not, you know, I did just, I did a lot of research before I started, but you know, I'm human. Yeah. Um, I, I spoke to as many people as I could about um, their experiences with this. And, um, and it, I mean, ev 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 everything I heard actually taught me that I wasn't going far enough with, <laughs> uh -huh. with um, how extraordinary this, this condition is. So, um, and I, I sent the book to, the people concerned after it was done and made sure that they knew it was coming out and asked them, you know, gave them the option should they wish to, to review it. And, you know. um, mm -hmm. I also, um, I, 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 I've never, I've never had any uh, pe people, people obviously feel strongly about this issue and I, it's not my, it's, it's not my place to tell them how to feel. Right. And, yeah. and still some of them may have been absolutely affected by this in their lives. I've yet to, um, as far as I can tell from the people with, this condition themselves nobody with the condition seems to have told me that seems to have had a problem with it um uh -huh. but i'm always i'm always listening of course i am i don't i don't necessarily <laughs> listen via the medium of goodreads you know but um because yeah. I, I i think you know that way mad madness lies i'm not going to mm -hmm. uh, try and pay attention like that but if but people write to me people um people tell me things and i uh there's been a couple of a couple of people with the, this particular uh, condition that have written to me and said that they found it rather empowering and that I that to see themselves at the center of a story yeah. um, and to see to see this to see this discussed in a sort of human way as opposed to used as a plot device mm -hmm. I 
I, I, I never want to make I, it, the last thing I want to do is is, is to um, exploit or victimize anyone. The, the only thing I want to do is, is tell the story, which I hope I hope um, it uh, illuminates how extraordinary um, these you know survive, survival and 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 and, uh, and human human uh, you know determination to, to endure can be. So that I mean, of course, it's you know, I, I'm it's not own voices. I'm not I'm not someone who suffers with that. But yeah, I think I I I just I, I hope I told a human story with compassion. That's that's all I can that's all I can do. You know. Yeah, and just I love your author's note in that book because it really felt like you just from that you took a lot of time and research and care into portraying that in the story. You weren't just slapping something up yeah. with that just for the sake of doing it for like a shock factor yeah, or anything. No. Like you really cared about what you were putting on the page and you didn't want to, you wanted to portray it as, um, what's the word I'm looking for? As authentic as possible. I, tr I, I did try. Yeah. And I think, I think it should, you know, that there, there's, there's certainly a little, a, a slightly unkind trick, not trick, but an, an unkind tactic the book employs, which is it perhaps, slightly lures the reader into leaning into their preconceptions about mental health for a uh -huh. little time uh, before it um before it correct course correct um and i think i think that was important too because you know we've all got i think i think there's i think there can be a problem um in it can be a problem in horror actually um mm -hmm. as much as i love it and i'm a champion for it it can be a real problem in horror in depicting mental health in a in a sensitive and 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 uh, fully vibrant and and real way right. so i think i that those were that's what i wanted to do i really i, I really hope it worked and I, I you know my my aim is always to is always to, to is to always to lift up not to not to, to denigrate or diminish yeah because when the book first starts out it seems like very obvious what's going on like this is the this is the yes. reveal and it's it becomes something much more than than what it actually is before a lot of the reveals not twists yeah, <laughs> i'm gonna start reveals. using reveals myself <laughs> in all of my reviews i'm gonna say this book had a lot of reveals from now on. <laughs> from now on. i'm sorry i don't I, I i'm not you do you you know it's <laughs> no, I, I mean i like it, I like it because it, you know i'm always looking for like when i do my reviews i'm looking for a word that's different than what i want to say <laughs> right right a different word than what i want than what's overused and sometimes you mm -hmm. can't but I like reveals. I'm gonna go with that. So I mean, and I feel like it's because you've done it great. I feel like it's hard to pull that off because sometimes, like you said, you can look back and sort of reflect. And, okay, it makes sense now that I've at the end. I know what yeah. has happened. And it's not just like, oh well, aliens were responsible. It's just like, where did right. that come from? That makes, <laughs> yeah, that like yeah. makes no and sense. And they were all like, really dead. Yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. It's not like just completely out of left field where it's like you're just dumbfounded by like, oh, wow, that's the kind of twist that like is horrible. Just something that's doesn't make any sense but yours all makes sense especially when you look back it's like okay now i can see the little baby steps and crumbs and why the carpet right. was orange and why it was blue and you know it all makes sense now at the end is that is that hard for you to, to pull it, that it, out? Just, just i don't know if you've ever seen brad's video review he did but he was like i want to tell you guys so much but i can't and he was just flipping out about it and like he talked, i literally like, was like He's like he's was talking like, for like seven minutes. He's like, but he doesn't tell us anything about it. He just said, I can't tell you, but trust me, Andrew's a talking cat. He just keeps going on and on about it. I was like thirty I seconds ago. I was like, stop watching my video. Go read the book and then come back. <laughs> that I mean, that was that was part of. In fact, the the, the initial marketing campaign was like, what can we tell you? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It was very, very. Uh, it was very interesting. And so what they did was they they sort of just lent into the problem and went. Um, we can't tell you anything about this book, which yeah. is quite a marketing strategy, actually. It is because it's you, like, well, why can't you? Why can't you? And then you get people curious yeah. about it. Yeah, like, I'm not sure it would. I'm, yeah, it was, <laughs> it was quite bold, though. <laughs> I'm not sure it would work for all books, but yeah, it was. It was. They were. They were great. It's my friend. I was maybe I don't know, three quarters of the way through. I was like, okay, I, I think I know what's going on now. I'm fully into it. I've got everything figured out. And then you hit yeah, like yeah. this another reveal. Just, like literally, my jaw dropped because I, I did not see it coming whatsoever it's like i can't tell anybody about this because it's so good i don't want to i don't want to spoil it for anybody i don't want to run the experience oh that's so good i mean what was really amazing is how good people were at keeping the secret like mm -hmm. i was really i was really impressed because you expect because it came out in the states i think a good six months after it came out in, in the uk and yeah. people, readers became very protective of it they became very like vigilant about guarding it for for the for for friends and for and for and for the general public like people were really 
they they were really great about it. I was I was really impressed and quite mo- a little bit moved by their 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 determination not to ruin the story for other people. It was incredibly uh-huh. it, it was incredibly like unexpected because of course you think if a book's been out for six months, everyone's going to just Google it, you know, just Google plot summary yeah, and right, yeah. on Needless Street. And um, but but it was it remained surprisingly surprisingly intact, which I was you know just goes to show that horror readers remain the best and um, horror people in general. Like my wife, my wife listened to it on audiobook, but before she started, she doesn't read very much. But she was like, "What's yeah. it about?" I was like, "I can't tell you. Just you got to read it." And then at the <laughs> Just end, read it. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't, I can't tell you anything about it. And then, like Brad was saying earlier, some of the some of the uh, negative reviews, you know, you could tell they either didn't finish it or they just didn't get it. Yeah. You know, they just didn't get it, understand it, take it in what was happening. So. Yeah, and it's not you know maybe they maybe some people don't want to necessarily spend their time in such a dark place you know yeah, maybe yeah. maybe they go they need maybe they need escapism from books you know it, it's it's it, it may not be for everyone you know everyone should read what they want to read yeah and and people are entitled to their opinions and everything like that I'm not saying that but yeah. it just that particular those particular negative ones just drove me nuts like you finish the book <laughs> and you'll you'll see that maybe it's not actually what it seems. Yeah. I mean, in a way, it's sort of, in a way, it's, uh, you know, like the rejection Mondays, there's something quite reassuring about it. You can tell they just haven't finished the book because it's like, oh, well, okay, well, it's because you haven't finished the book, you know. Uh-huh. Um, and I used to keep tabs on, um, I used to keep tabs on sort of like good read- reviews and, you know, read through them. And now I just, I think, I think, I think I've, I've, I've reached the stage where I just can't do that anymore. Yeah. I feel, yeah, I feel, I feel like, um, it's, um, I, because I'm, I think because I'm so busy with the next book, each time I release a book, you you get to this sort of stage of like you 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 develop a kind of like a moment of parting. You know, you just hand it over to the world, and that's it, and that's its it, that's its fate. Yeah. And I'm very, yeah. always very very interested in you know interested to hear what pe- what readers think. But I think you know like reading online reviews and things like that has 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 it it can it can really drag you back into in into into a strange state of mind where you're sort of worrying about something you wrote almost two years ago and i mm-hmm. I, I i think always onwards and upwards you know i can see that be a snowball effect like you're second guessing yourself about it and then it just snowballs and snowballs and and it's there's nothing to be done <laughs> like, yeah. it's published it's out there you've, you've finished it you've, in fact, you've got your kid out there they need to sink or yeah, swim yeah, yeah. And... it's got to sink or swim you know baby school grows up so so we're getting a lot of comments about Little Eve in in, in the Ooh. comments here. Should we transition? Lovely. Should we do a read? You want yeah. to be reading now and then oh, hop into sure, it, yeah. or, or how you want to do so, that? Yeah, I can do that. I just like Heidi's comment real quick. The synopsis for Needle Street is just just read it. Yeah. <laughs> that's the, that's that should have been the back <laughs> cover copy. Just read the book. <laughs> oh well, that's very kind. Um, yeah. Um, so onto my onto Little Eve, which came out uh, last week. So what is what is uh, Little Eve about? Before you read a little, uh, Little Eve about. is about on um, my in summary. Little Eve is about a young woman who may or may not have killed her entire family uh, <laughs> in a snake in a snake worshipping cult uh, in the middle of a circle of standing stones on a Scottish island on New Year's Eve, nineteen twenty. So, some easy reading for a nice easy, Saturday easy afternoon. Yeah, family friendly. It's yeah, a, it's, a- <laughs> it's a comedy. It's a comedy. Yeah, um, Shakespearean comedy. comedy. <laughs> hey, what part do you have that you're going to read for us? I'm going to read the beginning because I always okay. think, you know, like I always think, um, why, you know, why did I put that at the beginning if I don't want me to start there? <laughs> yeah, um, that makes sense. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right, I'll just, do a sh- I'll just do a very short one because I always think, I always think, how, how really long or short as you want? Yeah, cool with that. Totally fine. Okay. All right. Diner, 1921. My heart is a dark passage lined with ranks of gleaming jars. In each one something floats, the past preserved as if in spirit. Here is the scent of grass in the sea, here the creak of wheels on a rough path, here a bright yellow gull's beak. The sensation of blood drying on my cheek in the wind, Abel crying for his mother, uncle's hand on me, silver on a white collarbone. The knowledge of loss, which comes like a blow to the heart or the stomach. It does not reach your mind until later. She is there too, of course, Evelyn. Somewhere along the rows, behind glass, she floats in dim air. I do not seek her out. My survival depends on that. After everything, and against all odds, I have been given a chance. A life, never mind what kind. I have people who depend on me and I on them. Never mind who they are. 
I am filled with memory. I must make room in this dark passage. So I cast it forth this day. I give it to you. This is the day I became what I am. On the morning of the 2nd of January, 1921, James McRaith was roused by silence. The storm that had raged across the coast for three days had passed. Thunder, th thrushes and waxwings sang in the silver birches that lined Loyal's narrow to cobbled streets. It was half past six and there would be no dawn in these nor northern reaches for some hours. Jamie was 28 years of age in good health and had never married. He dressed by the light of a candle in front of a small square of glass that hung on the wall above the chest of drawers, a vest with thick woolen socks with gaiters and the collar of his co co cotton shirt tied together with a bright red kerchief, sheepskin waistcoat sm smelling strongly of lanolin. He painstakingly worked up lather from a sliver of, a sliver of shaving so soap and stropped his razor, put in his dental plate, filling the dark gap on the left side of his upper jaw with a white incisor and canine. The teeth had been lost in a blast in France. Last of all, he put in on with care the cufflinks his father had left to him. These were battered silver, inlaid with yellowing ivory, and Jamie McGrath had always loved them. When he held them in his hand, he felt the sway of a long trunk, the gentle tread of a great foot on dusty earth. He caught the scent of flowering hibiscus. The cufflinks also made him recall his father's death. The upstairs of the cottage was two, comprised two bedrooms, one occupied by Jamie. The other had been his father's and now lay empty but sometimes he still heard his father moving about in there. At 10 to 8, Jamie was unlocking the shop. He had been the butcher in Lo Loyal for two years since he came home from the war. He went to the cellar, unhooked a long, large side of beef and wrapped it up in a sheet. He dragged it out to where Bill, the pony, was tethered in front of the shop. He'd spent several months training him not to be a fear the scent of blood, but still, Bill sometimes balked at it. The beef had been ordered by the castle of Altnahara for New Year's Eve, known as Hogmanay in these parts. It was now three days late owing to the storm, and Jamie was uneasy concerning payment. He, lo he loaded the side of beef onto Bill using a harness and clips of his own design, and set off along the path which led along the sea. He did not meet or see a living soul on the road. At nine o'clock, in the hour of winter sunrise, birds started circling in the, in the brightening sky and the hills were painted in russet brown and grey rolling on and on into the deep north out to sea the sun was a burning ball casting its shattered light on the water the castle of Altnahara sat on the isle of the same name a quarter of a mile off the western shore of the peninsula a colonel john bearings had settled it in 1898 after returning from india repaired that he repaired the castle planted gardens set up beehives two women joined him alice seddington and nora Ma. They took in four infants, foundlings, plucked from the many destitute communities that litter the highlands. The, the, uh, the inhabitants of Al-Nahara came into the village every now and again to buy bootlaces or to have harness mended. They were considered odd, but were left alone. But after the murder in 1917, a great steel gate appeared across the stone causeway that connected Al-Nahara to the mainland. The children stopped attending the school in Loyal. The women no longer came to the village for bootlaces, no longer gathered driftwood on the shore. They retreated into themselves. They left polite notes at the gate. Pale green wool, the shade of a, cab of a cabbage heart, please. Knitting needles, times three. Three sharp flensing knives and a ball of string, large. Beef for Hogmanay, please, hung for at least three weeks. The people of Royal would check the basket as they passed out in the harrow and left the goods when they next happened by. Payment was left in the cage in the same fashion, always correct, to the farthing. It was said by the residents of Altnahara, as said by the villagers in Loyal, that the residents of Altnahara opened the gate at night under the autumn moon and ran wild over the moor, painted blue, looking for souls to take. Some said they were all long dead and the isle was populated by ghosts. But Jamie did not believe any of this. Ghosts and fairies did not use things like lamb's mints or wool. The walkway to the isle lay before him now under an inch of gleaming water. He congratulated himself he had timed his journey so well, for the tide would soon turn and be coming in again. Altnahara could only be reached at the ebb, and if he had if he had if he had dawdled, the sea would ne would have been lapping at his thighs by the time he came to cross. Bill, the pony, balked at the causeway. He planted his four feet firmly and showed that he would not get his hooves wet. Jamie tried to persuade him with a piece of sugared bread which he'd meant for his own lunch. He petted, he threatened, all to no avail. The pony would not go across. Rather than argue with five hundred pounds of stubborn Highland, Jamie unhooked the beef, took it onto his own back, and waded precariously out to the aisle. He heard the distant bark of seals as he as, as he waded, and the stiff wind blew in the wake of the storm. More than once, the weight of the beef nearly toppled him. As Jamie came close, the wind sang, sang strangely through the steel gate. 
It was 15 feet tall, hung from vast posts. Heavy chains held it fast. Jamie put the beef in the wire cage with a thump, but as he turned to go, he stumbled in the shallow water and steadied himself by grasping a spar at the gate. At his touch, it swung slowly open and Jamie went with it, falling to his knees with a splash. Before him was a small blue pebble beach, a path that led up the hill through yellowed winter grass. Sheep scratched mournfully at the hard earth and above the tumble-down silhouette of the castle. It was stark against the sky. Jamie straightened and called hello. The sh sheep leapt away in alarm, but no answer came. I thought they'd wish wished me to bring the meat up to the castle, he told the inquest later, and that they had left the gate open for me. He shouldered the beef and climbed the narrow stony path, the sky clearing to the sharp blue of a cold day. The, but beyond to the west, west, the land was bathed in light, but to Jamie, each step he took felt like a trespass. The castle was surrounded by a mot, old and crumbling, and the rusting portcullis was half descended. In the courtyard beyond, scraps of white paper or handkerchiefs tossed violently in the wind. The, cast, um, the spikes on the portcullis were sharp, and Jamie did not want to put himself under, as it looked as if it might go all the way down at any time and into me. He called out to the house again, and again there was no answer. He rolled the beef under the metal spears, and then reluctantly, with his eyes tightly closed, he wriggled through, waiting for the old iron to hurtle earthwards and pierce his ribs. Once inside the courtyard, he called again, Jamie was really put out by this time. He thought that perhaps he was being mocked or there was some game being played. And he saw as he approached the kitchen door that the white handkerchiefs were in fact five or six white gulls scrabbling over scraps of something. As he raised his fist to pound on the oak door, one gull, pursued by its fellows, barreled into his legs and it dropped what it was holding in its beak at Jamie McGrath's feet. This proved to be a human thumb severed neatly at the joint. Dun dun dun. Nice. Dun dun dun. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, as with um, reading the author's note for Little Eve, this one seems like maybe a more personal book for you since it's set in Scotland, and you said that's where your uh, your mother's originally from. And and you just really... by the way, you, you just sold like twelve in the chat. By the way, yeah. So you know, reading it a little bit. <laughs> oh, thank you guys. That's <laughs> wonderful. Oh yes, exactly. Come adore my unloved baby. Um, no, it's um, <laughs> it's um, it, I mean they're all personal, aren't they? They're all extremely uh -huh. um, they all cut you. You tear each one from your chest with a bloody fist. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, it's very, it's very personal. This one in lots of ways. So my first novel used as a landscape, the landscape of Dartmoor, which um, it, which is where I we used to spend all of our summers when we were moving around. From I grew up in. Uh, the US, Yemen, Madagascar, Kenya, Morocco. And um, we always went back to the, to Dartmoor, which um, is sort of quite like Scotland, actually. It's very moors and standing stones and wild ponies, and it's, it's lovely. But mm -hmm. um, for Little Eve, I wanted to use Scotland particularly for where, because it's where my mother was born. Mm -hmm. um, and she moved to Zimbabwe when she was with her, with her obviously with her family not on her own um, <laughs> when she was when she was three um with with her with her um, brothers and sister and um it's it's got this this amazing hold on them she was born in Ayr which is um the birthplace of the great Scottish poet Robbie Robbie Burns mm -hmm. and um whenever you get them all together they still especially when they had a wee drum in them a wee drum of whiskey they still speak in this incredibly rich Scottish accent. And it just, it, it moved me so much. It, it, I think it's so interesting that this, this re remains so deep in them, this place, so deeply embedded. Um, and uh, despite how long they've been gone and, and you know, being raised in a very, very, very different climate and environment and country. So I wanted to use that. And as well, because they, there's, there's this simultaneous longing for home and also sense of being a stranger, always a stranger in a strange land, whether uh -huh. they, they're in Zimbabwe or in Scotland. And that's sort of a lot of what Little Eve is about. Oh, and a, a, it's obviously a lot about murder as well, but- um, <laughs> Oh yeah, lots of, murder, <laughs> lots of murder, lots of murder. So like going into this one, like starting out, I didn't expect it to be the, the mind bender reveal -y one like Last House it is, but it ends up sort yeah. of being the same way, not to necessarily the same extent, but still on that same level, which I wasn't expecting going in, but I really liked, I don't, maybe I should have expected it. I don't know. After reading last house, but I really liked 
that's very much uh, sort of a slow burn with the sort of reveals and stuff. And it's not till later on in the book that all that starts to kind of unravel. Yeah. 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 It's, um, it's got, yes. So um, Eve is, uh, the book is sort of told from two different viewpoints. From two different viewpoints, there's Dinah who survives, and Eve who uh, uh, Eve who is the murderer who then disappears. Um, uh-huh. And you you learn about what the days and years leading up to the murder from Eve. You just, you learn about the cult and the, the you know the snake rituals and about Uncle who is the lead who's their you know patriarch. And oh, yeah. then you learn about the subsequent investigation of the murders and Dinah's survival and her you know her her trying to rationalize her trauma um in the other part of the book and they sort of meet in the middle at the murders um mm-hmm. there's in eve is told that she can read minds which i always think is a very interesting thing um that you know happens in it happens with um cults is this simultaneous control but also sense of grandiosity that that you're that people are given you know um everybody is is, is vying for or being made to feel special uh-huh. Um, and but Eve for Eve obviously it's it's real, um, and a lot of the book is a dialogue between um, between between and fro about whether that wh- what exactly her gift is if it's right. anything, um, uh-huh. superstition and faith because I don't think superstition and faith are the same thing, um, and um, it's yes so it, it's it, it's it's a lot about um, control uh, the, the things that pre- preoccupy me greatly you know about control about um about death and fear thereof of you know determining your destiny in in a in a in a chaotic world because a lot of it takes place during world war one as well yeah so this is this time of great change i mean also what what a time for horror um you know real world horror right there Uh uh-huh I, I thought it was interesting that it takes place you know a lot of 1920s and then up to the 1930s by the end but when they're on the aisle sort of yeah. in the, the castle, it feels much later in time, like maybe the 1800s or something, because there's no technology. Yeah. They're sort of yeah. isolated and, and they just have like cloth, so, clothes yeah. on. Yeah, 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 yeah. It feels like almost two yeah. different time frames almost at the same time. Was that something that was sort of maybe yeah. intentional or just something that just kind of happened along the way with it? Maybe where it felt older than it actually was set? Yeah, I mean, I think that I think that's all part of the deprivation that's imposed on yeah. them, you know. Um, and they you know they they re- they refuse as as is quite um typical as i understand it with cults they refuse to participate in in any way with the outside world mm-hmm. um they're very so they they're hermetically sealed as it were so you know to, and and keeping people away from co- forms of communication and technology is is very much part a part of that you didn't have um, to join a cult for research on this did you <laughs> she started her own <laughs> No, yeah, exactly. That's what that sheep, the skin sheep, was over the wall. That was the start of the cult. Well, I was, I was just thinking instead of doing the like, she doesn't like to do the diagrams to set up everything. It's just all in her head. I figure the research. She, she had to join one. Or start one. one. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if you, well, yeah, if you can't, well, to to paraphrase, if you can't find one, start one. Start one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, it's lovely. Well, thank you. I'm happy to discuss that book. <laughs> did you um did you do any research on like cult mentality or psychology or anything for this one specifically no, it's, yeah yeah I mean, I mean a lot of it's just my kind of my natural leisure reading anyway to be honest but um mm-hmm. i did yes i did and i did a lot of research on scottish folk tales and on um and on um uh, telepathy and mind reading and cold mm-hmm. reading uh, uh-huh. and uh, that was very very interesting um uh you know the uh, the the different ways that you can one can persuade one I, I mean I think this occurs in Needler Street as well is you know the different ways the mind finds to persuade to to to, to circle around unpalatable truths you know uh-huh. um I yeah so I, I I I do I do a lot of research and I you know to also just like I listen to my mother just like you know that longing in her voice it's uh-huh. very something about it which really takes just helps me help me click back into the book whenever i needed to get back into it you know has your mom read the book did she read it when it came out yeah she did thank goodness and she's also read her new <laughs> um she's also read the new um <laughs> the new the new forward which sort of talks is a little bit more explicit about all of that and luckily she wasn't too horrified so that's good <laughs> i was saying did she like her she say no you messed this up this part's not right or <laughs> 
<laughs> thank god also like you don't live there you don't know <laughs> um <laughs> but um no she was she's she's lovely she's very supportive actually and um I think she was rather moved, moved by seeing i don't know having me write about something that was so inspired by her life you know mm-hmm. she found that quite lovely and you know a way of kind of commem- commem- commemorating something is, is that yeah. someone your your mother is that someone you, you run stuff by from time to time for your books or just wait for the no 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 no, <laughs> no, I, no i think you you always gotta write 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 like no one's watching but also definitely yeah. don't write like write like your parents are yeah make sure, make sure well. mom's not watching yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Like just don't read chapter seven, nine, fifteen, twenty-nine. <laughs> just have a list of yes. what they can't read. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean that, that would actually be quite handy. Just give them the redacted part. It's all blacked out like CIA exactly. documents or something. <laughs> right. <laughs> but um you you said earlier in the in the show that um your know, your newest work is your best work. So did you did you I have so. any and I, I don't want to this to sound negative, I'm not trying to meet it in a negative way, but did you have any fear or trepidation releasing an older book after you've put out Last House and Sundial? Like maybe people wouldn't think it was up to par as your last two books since you wrote it before or anything like yeah, that? Or maybe, did you just not think about it? Or? Um, thing is, I mean, because the good thing about that, that book is it was so unsuccessful that it couldn't possibly do worse. <laughs> um, um, and um, I, I also, I think I just felt like Tor wouldn't, Nightfire wouldn't have taken it on if they thought it wasn't going to work um Uh so and i it it felt uh, obviously it's different and it's 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 strange to have something which i've moved on from as a writer you know out in the world but it is um it is nice Uh, and 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 sort of a a redeem it's a redeem a redemption arc for the book itself you know so i i i love it i didn't i didn't worry too much about it as i said because you know it it really it it, it could it only had it could only have gone upwards really (laughs) It's like, you know, like we said earlier, put your kid out there and what happens, happens with it. So Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's right. So with the um with this one, did you the character of Uncle was very interesting. And th- was he ever named at all throughout the book, or did they just call him Uncle the whole time? Did he, did they mention he's his name John. at all? He's he's called John. I think Officer yeah. Black knows his name, right? Yeah. He does. He he's was, called he's called yeah, he's John Be- John Baring, I think. That's right. Yes, John Baring. Sorry, I'm right. Yeah, <laughs> he's um, he's sort of, you know, he's he's he, he's a very creepy he, guy, but he's like not creepy almost at the same time. He's a very odd character. Yeah, well, you see him through the eyes of Eve and Dinah, so you know, to them, he's sort of godlike. And mm-hmm. then I think you know, um, and it's not too much. It's not too much of a spoiler because it happens very early on in the book. But you know, he's he's one of the he's one of the he's one of the murdered in the circle, and mm-hmm. um. And there's a moment where someone observes someone, um, Dinah who survives, sort of thinks, well, he's actually quite small, isn't he? She never yeah. realized that when he was alive. Like so the I veil's he, been pulled back. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, also with this, did you, with the, uh, the snake cult, was that something that you drew upon some folklore or anything, or did you just make that whole thing up? Oh, that I made up, yeah, <laughs> completely, <laughs> all from my imagination, yeah. Oh, for, I didn't know if it was something you drew from from a Scottish folklore or anything, or that was just strictly. No, a cat I mean, thing. I think, I think, I think, um, you know, the handling of the snakes was very, you know, it was almost from those Why does that to be snake snakes? churches. <laughs> because the, they're, not, because they're nice snakes, snakes, Jay. They're nice I snakes. Yeah. That's just one of my <laughs> like, like Brad's uh, main things. Eyeball horror. Yeah, I can't do I, the I'm eyeball not, horror. And there's eyeball, snake. there's eyeball horror in this too. It's awful. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah there is. Sorry about that. Stuff, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but then again, you know, then, then again, just goes back to being thing. uncomfortable, you know. So, <laughs> oh, you said you're you're blind in that one, in that eye. I'm actually blind in this eye, so I think I, I and I didn't re- I didn't really think about it, and then someone pointed out afterwards. They were like, "Oh, you're talking about someone who you know, like ends up being blind in one eye, and uh, you're blind in mm-hmm. one eye." And I was like, "Oh yeah, that makes sense." <laughs> um, but, I just forgot. <laughs> you just you just don't think about these things when you're writing. You just use yourself, you know. Yeah. So maybe subconsciously you're you're putting yourself in there, maybe in some way. No, because you're not yeah, a murderer, right. so no. <laughs> <laughs> not the murder bit, but I think you do use yourself without without realizing. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very yeah. Very, it's it's a very strange process, and you don't often you don't you look at it afterwards. And you're like, oh yes, well okay, that makes sense. Um, 
and uh, and, and I, I and of course that is you know you, you kind of almost disassemble yourself and scatter yourself across the page, um, and uh-huh. hopefully in a way that that makes it um, makes it readable and exciting. Yeah, the eye stuff was just awful because you it was like it was they, awful, the characters yeah. like felt it going in. I was like, oh god, this is awful. <laughs> they were just looking right at the needle or the little knife or whatever it was. Oh, it was bad. Yeah, it's not great. I mean, yeah, it's. I mean, but I think I think that's sort of maybe that you know it's it's also the sacrifice, the de- the deliberate sacrifice of it that makes it so uh-huh. <laughs> The idea that someone can just do that because they're um, it, because because they're because they're so uh, so persuaded of, a, of of certain truths, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, it, I mean, I think that's that's almost more frightening than um, the. Uh, than the actual act itself yeah and they're saying here in the, the comments it's beautifully tragic and i agree with that because it is oh that's nice you know, what you. has been taken away from all these girls on the island you know what could their lives have been had they not been sort of i don't even necessarily say yeah. kidnapped but just sort of because some of them were taken from like poor homes and stuff like that just what their life could have been as opposed mm-hmm. to what they were they got wrapped up in and but sort it's, of but it's, it's also a novel of survival you know it's it's about endurance and about finding ways to 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 live um with things that shouldn't shouldn't be livable you know and to live mm-hmm. with um to live with the past and a past that's almost unbearable um i i'm i think it's i think it's it's definitely a survival story um mm-hmm. and it's 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 more about um you know them than it is about what happens to them if you if you know what i mean um you know it's it's about the, their uh, their will to their you know their will to you know to, to carry on despite everything and um and about their relationships as well you know that um, that despite their messed up environment and this terrible um immense pressure they're always under and control that that's inflicted on them they still mm-hmm. manage to sort of love each love each other and be yeah. and be be sisters and be a family I, mm-hmm. I I find that very I find that very moving and you know it's and there's a, and and then there's a sort of element of you know later when Dinah has a sort of found family of her own yeah um it's 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 you know w- there's always a light there's always a light somewhere even if it's even if it's small and flickering and faint even with her and and Eve growing up on the island together that was sort of a found family you know they had that sisterly bond even though yes. they're not blood sisters and yes. stuff yes exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you know, there's, you know, you can, I think, I think you can, there's, yeah, there's love, there's love everywhere. If you, if you know how to look for it. Yeah. Well, it's sentimental, isn't it? But I think, <laughs> I think, you know, horror, horror has a lot of love in it. And, and that's why, that's why it makes it so frightening. I think there's a lot of found family kind of stuff in horror. Yeah. And that really shines through in a lot of books, especially, you know, this one with all of, and uh, what's, what was the, the boy's name? Cause there's just that one boy on the island as well with uncle. Abel. Abel. Abel, yeah. yeah. He seemed he's he seems sort of outcast compared to everybody else, a bit a bit different. Well I think it um it's mentioned when um it's mentioned at some point that um uncle took him because he was little and thin and he thought he was a girl. Yeah. So uh there's a sort of um and I, th- I think against the against the backdrop of um, you know, w- uh, the first world war, which um completely um obliterated much of the young male or indeed just the male population of, of Europe and uh-huh. um, there's this sort of there's this sort of counterpoint of you know so, some of the suffering that's inflicted on on the girls is gendered but also some of the suffering that's inflicted on in the world outside and 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 on Abel is also gendered you know so it's um it's it's a kind of there's a there's a kind of they're kind of they're, they're sort of like um counterpoints to each other I think I, I remember Uncle at one point saying he wished he could have taken Abel back, but they wouldn't let him do that. He just he wanted to get rid of him at that one point. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's it's a, it's 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 a sad, it's a sad, it's a sad story. I mean, I I did <laughs> um, I did some research for it um about um, uh, you know uh, orphans and families and and um and, and familyless children around that time and. I mean, I'm not sure it's that much better today, but you, you know, there, there are no no good answers really. So the way that uh-huh. they bond together and and, um, and and support, not always, but in general, support each other is always is is kind of their it's kind of their 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 linchpin, their lifeline. Yeah, and I guess being that they were orphans, I guess maybe they. It sounds weird to say, it, but maybe they were better off with Uncle 
than maybe they would have been, but you know, it just depends on what say, yeah. I yeah, mean, I, I, else, you, say, <laughs> you sort of hesitate to say that, but yeah, but, but yeah, maybe. Mm-hmm. So where do you normally get your uh, inspiration from? I mean, like true stories, just documentaries, movies, other books. I mean, or... everywhere. Yeah, I am. Yeah. Uh, yeah, everywhere. I, 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 I usually find that there's a combination of things that set off like a sort of, a sort of like, uh, you know, a little like a set of synaptic firings in my head. Like with Sundial, it was this combination of doing mothers and daughters, and um, uh, and and then discovering the MK Ultra. Uh, behavior modification experiments that they mm. did at Langley on the dogs. So, mm. which a lot of people think I made up, and I, I did not, which is <laughs> it's something else. Um, but it's very, um, it's very, uh, it's it 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 plays into that um, idea of playing God. So at Langley, they created essentially um, a pack of remote controlled dogs. They implanted uh, electrodes in their limbic systems and um, covered the brain, the exposed skull, with little. Uh, dental cement, little bowler hats of dental cement. And um, uh, then they would seek to teach the dogs to seek out pleasure impulses uh, uh, so that they could it, essentially, like whether you, whether you put and you pressed a button, the dog would learn, would seek out turning left and seek the impulse until it turned right again. You could you could direct them and make them uh-huh. do very simple things like sit down and fetch and all of that. And um, But it's, it was completely useless and they couldn't find a practical application for it. So after two years, when they'd accomplished their aim, they destroyed the dogs and just never, never revisited it. And you can find all of this information on um, the Black Vault, which is a big like uh, dump site of uh, redacted but declassified CIA documents. Um, mm-hmm. And I thought that this was just so... You're not horrible. in the dark web, are you? <laughs> no. Okay. No, no, it's freely, okay. freely available. Okay. Dark everything, but not dark web. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, and um, it was incredible. Yeah, it was incredibly. Um, yeah, it was incredibly. It was. In- it was incredibly. Uh, it, it sort of. It sort of offended me. Um, it's a bit. Uh-huh. You know, I, I. It reminded me of that quote from Jurassic Park of. Um, you know, you were so busy wondering whether you should, you never stopped to think about whether you could. Oh, sorry, whether you, yeah. yeah, whether you st- whether you could, you never stopped to think about whether you should. And mm-hmm. um, I just. I just thought that's playing God in a very specific way, isn't it? That's like trying to jump the fence over all the things which make us us. It's trying to control something which obviously is, you know, our behavior is all a combination of genetics and upbringing and, and free will and all, all these things. And you're just trying to jump the fence and just like co-opt it and and, and, t- and seize control of it. Um, but then there's nothing to do with it. So all of these, you know, this suffering and these six lives were just wasted. So, and that, that fed back very deeply into Sundial. And I, I, because there is some, you know, there's a, it's there's animal experimentation in the book, which I I put it in because I think it's horrible and it's, I abhor it. Um, yeah. It's it's true horror for me. But yeah, it's, guys, we're just about to be invaded by two very small, excited children. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I might have to I might have to leave you there. But um, is there anything else? Because I think they're due in they're due in two minutes. Is there anything else we should talk about before we, before I go? We, we we just want to really thank you so much for agreeing oh, to do two, yeah. two, two bozos with microphones and you're chatting it up <laughs> i like <laughs> I, I stalked i stalked the interwebs for an email for you and i sent it, it was like she'll never respond oh, yeah. oh my gosh that's amazing you. oh no yeah i oh, mean we, we can't so think great. enough i mean to get all this insight on, on some of your big books i mean i, I know the the horror community loves your, your 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 work and also um we could cross this off as one of our uh bucket list authors but, yeah so bucket list authors that we want to talk to so we really appreciate it stopping oh, by I, I had a, i had a ball thank you and thank you everyone who's been watching and commenting and buying the book um, <laughs> bye 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 um <laughs> oh actually i do I, actually i do mean bye um but um, listen thank you so much again for having me yeah. and um lots of love and um yeah maybe we'll talk, talk to you again next year for looking glass sound yeah thank absolutely you so much. Where, where can uh, people find you real quick Oh yes, I'm so sorry. So I'm on Twitter, Katrina Ward. Um, I don't do d- DMs because I just, you know, too many. You probably get a billion of it's them. A, so yeah, it's a jungle out there. Um, <laughs> and then I, I always forget my Instagram account. So let me just tell you what it is. What do I find? I don't, I don't know why my brain is incapable of um, retaining this information. But it's Cat Ward, C A T W A R D, sixty six. Um, Cat Ward sixty six on Insta. Um, and I want to be found there wasting time most days. <laughs> I think yeah, thank you so much. We totally appreciate it. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, Everyone, Kat, thank you so thanks much for joining us. Thank you. And um, have a lovely Saturday, everyone.
Till we meet again. Well. See everybody. See ya. See you, Kat. Love Bye. you, Jay. I know. <laughs> Love you, Jay.